Hello everybody and I can hear um, Kinley's dogs in the background so hello to them too. Uh, welcome to the long awaited uh, episode of the SciPod SciLock edition. It's been about two months since the last episode uh, because of uh, other restrictions from our country and other uh, what you call logistical issues. We have not been able to uh, produce any episodes, but uh, nevertheless, we have come also laziness and also procrastination as well. Uh, we yes. have not been able to come back, but nevertheless, like I was saying, we are back and with full force in the lockdown Psylocke edition. Hello, everybody. Um, like I always, I'm joined by my co host, Kin Lepinzo. Hello, I thought we were calling it Lockpod. I thought I don't know. I I just thought of like Psylocke because you know there's an X Men character called Psylocke. Yeah, I was about to say there's an X Men character called Psylocke. So. Yeah, so I was, I was just like it kind of fits the theme, but then again, it might not be um, relevant for a guest who's not actually you know, experiencing lockdown here with us. But anyways, uh, with that with that regard, we'll segue. Kinle, uh, can you uh, <laughs> introduce our guest? By the way. All right, so today in with us here on call, all the way from Australia, five hours ahead, her time is 11, it's like 11 p.m. her time. We have Miss Brooke Chinese artist, as she's known on Instagram, and we are going to be referring to her as DBA throughout this uh, session because... Broke Bhutanis artist just feels like a mouthful at this point. How's Chanka? How's Chanka? How's Chanka? How's Chanka? Oh, Chanka! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that name. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm. anyways. Uh, welcome, uh, Broke Bhutanese artist to the pod. Uh, how, oh, do, how, thank you. how does it feel becoming our long awaited guest? Oh, oh, it's such a privilege. Okay, thank you. Uh, have you ever have you listened to the pod by any chance? Uh, I have watched your pod with Karinsa before. Okay. And it was wonderful. Okay, thank you. By the way, I, uh, she actually reached out to us because if I remember, mm-hmm. um, she actually mentioned. Uh, I think sorry, not her. Uh, Karinsa had actually mentioned her as well during his pod. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember Karinsa mentioning uh, you also. That's why I kind of checked out your stuff on IG before. Then when Kinley mentioned yeah. about uh, uh, you coming on the pod, I was like, oh yeah, I remember her from that tiny support and also I checked out your kind of your stuff on IG. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you. Uh, how, how did you and uh, think Tiny Tynisa connect, by the way? Oh, so um, uh, it was about two years ago, I think, Tynisa and I, we met on Instagram. Yeah, he was just showing me his work and I thought it was pretty cool and I asked him if I could help out mm. and he said that'd be all right and we became a team. No, but how did like uh, <laughs> figure out like oh, like like you're a Bhutanese person and also like the right person to fit for his kind of content? Yeah, yeah. I think like the that. Name broke these artists sort of gave that away. He's like, she seems like she will work for free. I'll contact her. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yep. <laughs> Funny enough, you know, uh, he he was on the Humans of Simple page, and then they did he did a face reveal. So actually, now yeah, I can't I'm know. I was so surprised. I'm I'm a little insulted that he did not do his face reveal on our podcast. He did I it know, on right? Humans of <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I was like, yeah, I commented on the post. I was saying like, you actually did a face reveal. Like, yeah, like indirectly, I did a face reveal. <laughs> yeah, we still don't know. So yeah, uh, Brock Putin is, yeah, his, but I, the name reveal should be done on Sidepod. Maybe we can get him <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, anyways, can you go on? So, so yeah, Chanka, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sounds sorry, sounds so okay. demeaning, yeah. Yeah, it sounds so derogatory, not Chanka. Oh, yeah. um, anyway, um, sorry, BBA. So, yeah, like, uh, you, you've you been living in Australia for a while, you told me, right? You went there yeah, during, yeah. After, like, while you were in high school, you were in Australia? Yeah, I was. 
So I, uh, tell us a little bit about that because I mean Australia is somewhere that a lot of you know Bhutanese aspire to go. That's like paradise at this point. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. For a bit of time. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, I may not be able to tell you Australia from the point of view of an adult, but I can mm-hmm. tell you from the point of view of a teenager when I came here. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so, um, the yeah. place where uh, I'm living at is in the countryside, and there isn't much of a Bhutanese. Hmm, Katmo, we yeah. will visit. <laughs> What's the place called? Yeah, uh, it's called Aubrey. It's mm. in New South Wales. Aubrey. Let me look that up. Uh-huh. How do you spell that? Yeah, A L B U R Y. Yeah. Can you, can you say that again? Sorry. A-L-B-U-R-Y. A- yeah. A-L-B-U-R-Y. B-U-R-Y. My God, I'm so retarded. Okay, nice. Albury. Okay. Albury is an Austrian city in New South, Southern New South Wales. Okay. okay yeah. Nice. Go on. Yeah. So, um, from the view of a teenager, it, uh, I was very close-minded. So, at first, I didn't really um, have a good time. <laughs> But I think now I'm getting used to it, so I like it, I should say. Okay. How long has it been now since you've been uh, living there? Uh, I've been here for three years. Oh, three years. In Australia yeah. in general or in uh, Albury? Uh, in Albury. So when we came from Bhutan, we directly came to Albury. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. And then we have been staying here. It's kind of smart because a lot of the other places uh, were like Perth and I think Perth is like completely like overrun by Bhutanese at this at this point. Mm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it makes sense to like go a little further away. Where I think then the opportunities come out a little more easy because now we have a lot of friends in Perth. Uh, recently, one of our cast members for Get Happy also uh, left and I think he's in Perth right now. Shout out to Nimokan. So like, you know... Yeah, catapongs. And uh, a lot of people have told me that in Perth, it becomes a little difficult to start, you know, to sort of like uh, get settled there quickly and get a job. Yeah, but I think um, since Perth is a city, it is a bit better in finding jobs because in countryside it is a bit harder. And that's why most Britons, they opt to go to Perth. Mm-hmm. But uh, what do you do? Like, I'm sure you're also working. Like, what, 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 uh, what sort of employment have you taken? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, I actually used to do two jobs before I joined uni. Mm-hmm. So, in the mm-hmm. daytime, I used to work at a supermarket, and then at nighttime, I used to work at a Thai restaurant as a waitress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, I'm trying to save up for my uni <laughs> okay I'm, I'm so sorry this is going to sound a little uh, weird but did they at the thai restaurant expect you to behave like a thai person oh so yeah it's really funny because whenever because when i am working there as a waitress most of the customers they assume that i'm thai and they talk mm-hmm. to me in thai <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would think the same. Thing. Exactly. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we all have the look because I ask you this because when 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 I was studying in India, so a lot of these marriage, you know, in India uh, during these big big fest uh, ceremonies like weddings, yeah. they would hire a lot of Bhutanese and um, basically you know chinky people, yeah, and yeah, they would yeah. hire. The, and they would uh, tell all of them to pretend to be Thai or pretend to be Vietnamese or pretend uh. to be Chinese. So that's why I asked you to, to make you do that as well. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. And it's fine because they used to they used to like, I think they didn't take the guys so much. They used to take a lot of the girls and girls used to earn upwards like five, like uh. seven, eight hundred. Seven, eight hundred per night? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, to be waiters, you know, you have to work as servers and waiters. Oh, oh. Okay. but still very and quite shit salary, quite shit oh. pay. For- <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> it's, it, what do you expect? But then the thing is, it wouldn't be just one night. It would be like a stretch at one go. Like sometimes it could be even 10, 15 days. Like weddings, wow. yeah, weddings in, in Indian weddings, you know. Mm. Yeah, especially in the winters, my goodness. Was in the winters the wedding thing, what? Yeah, because in the summer it's too hot. Who's going to get married in the summer in India? It's too way too hot. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, anyways, uh, so yes, Miss Chanka, uh, I I read your thing also, by the way, your uh, Tim, Humans of Timbu post also. So oh, I kind of got a kind you. of idea what uh, what you went through. So you were 15 when you went to Ting Mai Mo, Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now, how old are you? So it's been three years, so I'm assuming you're 18. Yeah. Uh, I'm almost 19. Okay, you're almost 19. So when you yeah. were in Bhutan, you were studying where? Which part of Bhutan? Uh, I studied at Bumtang, oh, Jakar High School. Oh, okay, okay. So... You grew up speaking Bumtap or Zongha or, um, or No, I grew I grew up speaking Kingpa. Kingpa, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm Kingpa. I'm very I'm I'm very proud to say because yeah, I, King, I was King chatting with this. Uh, Chanka. <laughs> I was chatting with her about an hour or so, about a few hours ago. Oh, sorry, yeah, about yesterday, and she yeah. told me she's uh, from Jemgang, and I was like, yes, another oh, Prakhi. Cool, cool. So Jemgang. Yes, <laughs> Oh, cool, cool. So from Jemgang, you then you you grew you grew up all your uh, till fifteen. You grew up in Bumtang, eh, Yeah, I did. Okay, so from Bumtang, then you moved to Australia with your parents. Is that so? Yeah. So your parents uh, moved for work. Is that is that right? Uh, so my dad is studying here. Oh, is he still studying, or is he now done? Oh, uh, he's doing. Um, yeah, he will be done this year. Oh. He's studying. Uh, he's doing PhD. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So when you, when you were studying, you guys just went along with with you and your mom or are your siblings? Is that so? Yeah, I have a brother, so all of us we just came with our dad. Okay. So how was the transition? This is like, yeah. Yeah. So how's how's the transition Sorry, uh, coming from like like like. like I don't know which part of Bhumtang is in Bhutan, but then from another like not so very urbanized part of Bhutan to like the you know, kind of a first world country in Australia. So you tell yeah. me it was kind of like a different experience. So can you share some of the experience? Oh you had? yeah. Uh, so like I mentioned, the place I'm living at is in the countryside. Mm. So it isn't it like when I first came here, it wasn't much of a like such of a big city and such a big transition mm -hmm. but culturally it was very different and it was very hard for me to understand um the australian <laughs> way of speaking like, oh, okay. yeah they use a oh. lot of slang and they have a very different perspective okay but i think like you've got on a little bit of the slight accent you've got no atichi <laughs> yeah, you, the, she she has she has a small bit of yeah, that so Australian you've got, you've kind of acquired a like a small uh, Australian like, like certain words I can I, I can get a hint hint of that no ah uh, yeah, oh, so cool. yeah you might have, uh, what do you call adapted to your surroundings no? yeah yeah I think so but what were the things that like, when you moved there sorry Kinle uh, I don't want to I, may, I didn't mean to cut you off okay, continue. No worries, please. You finish your question. Okay, I was just going to say, like, so what were the things you said? No, like, uh, you had hard times, uh, like, kind of adjusting. So, what were the things, like, uh, in like the, the way they speak, or like, well, culturally, some things? What, what were the things you had to, like, be hard uh, transition? So, I think it was actually um, more of a, it was more of a, like, my self created problem because when i first came here i wasn't very open-minded and then when i went to school i felt very different and mm. i thought like um nobody would like me or, oh, okay, like, okay. yeah and, and also when people tried to speak to me i couldn't really understand um their style mm. like they don't really speak like direct english they speak uh, they, they use a lot of slang. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so I find it hard to understand them, and then I think they got bored. Okay, but now, now how are you now? Are, are you like now? Do you understand the slangs and all the stuff now? Uh, uh, I don't. <laughs> so don't. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I don't. The Australian, the Australian like slangs is something that's really like even I think like in in England. 
especially with the Cockney accent, with, with Cockney, you know, like it's so weird because people literally say entire sentences just using slangs. In it and, and if you're not, mm. yeah, and no, like like they would say something like plates of meat when they mean your feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's so they very use like English, a lot English, of no, very English, English. Yeah. Yeah, so like slang, like especially for like. Like, slang isn't something that's very like I don't think Bhutanese use a lot of slang when we speak. We use a lot of idioms though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if you watch any any Zonka movie, you'll notice that almost everyone has to say an idiom before they say something or the other. Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot what kind of idiom we yeah. use now. In Zonka, we talk about English. Zonka, Zonka, Ngachi, tell it to me. Zonka movies that you watch, no? Some people always have to give you these long idioms before they tell you what the idiom means, no? Huh? But you never, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah but then, yeah, like, this is just like for, like, you know, like, theatrical purposes. No one talks like that shit. Yeah, yeah, theatrical. Like, yeah, I don't know. I know we don't talk like that. Like, Who's gonna come to you and say, Where, Kinle, Sambazada, Samel, Lemesa, Zegla, Zumbe? You know, today I had, yeah, a, I had to really struggle and work hard for the bullshit. You know, no one comes around and talks like that. Yeah, yeah. You clearly, you clearly had a very, very uh, lovely child uh, school life, say. Because when I was in school, almost every, every one or two days, I had to meet people who had to talk like, who, talk, who spoke like that. I'm not even joking. Well, I think you, you must have met some very, like, you know, expressive Zonka speakers because, like, like casually speaking, I don't think yeah. I was going to start with the idiom here. I had a friend who used to it, but I think he used to do it more to annoy me than anything. Maybe, um. Maybe. Anyway, uh, Chanka. I have the yeah. most important question to ask you. Oh, okay. Then you went to Australia and Nick say, "Ning sumia gay pare na." Then we kangaroo isha chappe. Kangaroo isha machap la. Then I machap ya, just machap ya. Koala isha to chappe ra. Na vegetarian hona ne. Ya shama zukala ba ya. Shami chap. Uh, at any, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, 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 Kingpa sounds very much like Bumtap Zumbira Dumo. Uh, yeah, Kingpa Bumtap. No, very quite similar because I understood at least three years the Hagui Ying Sumla Dudi. But then chapter of that, it sounded really wrong in my other ear, but then I kind of got that you meant that you eat kangaroo meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do they people actually, do people actually eat kangaroos though? Oh yeah, I like in supermarkets. I've seen like they sell kangaroo steaks. Oh my god! I... But then you have like, to eat it quick before it jumps off your plate. <laughs> isn't like kangaroo like a symbol of like, like you know Australia? No, like why yeah, would, it is. <laughs> why would they, why are they eating the kangaroos? Yeah, but they also make like boots and stuff. So I think it's um <laughs> normal. <laughs> wow, like the kangaroo boots. I mean, no. come on, Sai. Just because, just because it's the symbol of the country doesn't mean that it doesn't taste good. I mean, who knows? You might like. Who knows? What if Takin tasted really good? Oh. You just haven't tried it. Well, I, mean, I could assume you know you could eat Takin because they're like you know similar to like cows and you know like yaks, but then like a kangaroo, <laughs> it's kind of out, out of the ordinary. <laughs> okay, anyways. So, oh, Miss Chanka. Dele, so you went to Australia. So how did you? Were you like you're an artist now? You're a graphic. Yeah. Uh, you're a digital artist or is artist artist? What kind of what do what do you consider yourself? Ah, uh, I'm both. I'm both tra- traditional and digital. Okay. So the, were you like into the drawing and all the stuff uh, art art wise before going to Australia, or did you discover that kind of uh, stuff when you went? Uh, uh, like even before, I had a very mild interest like everyone else but i thought i was really bad at drawing mm-hmm. yeah so i didn't even look at it but then after coming to australia i i started drawing and then uh i think it's more of a um it more of a has to do with skill than talent so because i drew every day i think that's what made me get better Oh, okay. Practice, persistence. Consistence, consistency. Yeah. So, like, uh, well, like I've, no, 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 yeah, I was looking at some of. Uh, this is going to. This is going to be very difficult to do because you can't tell who's going to speak first. <laughs> no, it's okay. You can anyway, see. Uh, you can see the vocal thing, but it, it gives a cue, visual cue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, 
Okay. Well, well, you can see, Sai. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Did you um, yeah. <laughs> no, but like I was looking at some of. Um, I I uh, I did not know you you did digital because I was looking through some of your posts and most of them seem to be like traditional style. I was also mm-hmm. I'm quite interested about, and I see that you also like to write a bit because you have some stuff which you've like written as well. Are you into that? Like, oh, I do. Well? Yeah. So have you I like, published anything? Oh, I haven't yet, but um, I but I will in the future. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so right now I'm just trying to improve my drawing so I can um, draw good enough to be sent for publishing. So do you think yeah. you can find yourself a career in uh, in in your in your what you call art? Oh yes, yeah. so um, I would like to, but for now I'm studying podiatry. As a safety mm-hmm. net, <laughs> because I don't like taking risk. You know how art and writing is very risky. You only get a career out of it if you're really good at it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, that's, so, that's very, very smart to do that. You know, you cannot bet your all your put your eggs in all in one basket. Also, that also in uh, artists, you know, are yeah, I if know. you make money, that you gotta be realistic. Yeah, yeah. So, um, my plan is I do podiatry, and then when I get that job, I'll um, I'll also do art side by side. Mm. And while doing that, if I succeed in art, then I will dedicate my full time to art. What's podiatry, by the way? Podiatry is like a dumbass. Yeah, it's uh, child care. Doctor, uh, basically no, children no, get doctors. No, no, it's not. It's not pediatry. It's podiatry. <laughs> oh, I I heard pedi- I thought it was pediatry. Sorry, <laughs> I, I mistake. Yeah. So yeah, it's um p o d i a t r y. And that is. Oh, okay. I did not know podiatry. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Even I also didn't know. I I didn't know what it was. Yeah, I was trying to get into enroll into uni before February this year, and then um, one of my my agent recommended me podiatry, so I just did it. What What is podiatry, though? Uh, podiatry is it's like um, it's like medicine, like health related to foot and leg. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been really funny if you took podiatry thinking that it was pediatry because you yeah, wanted to look after children a and then it's a foot doctor. Yeah, a foot doctor. Oh, well, I don't know. There was like a. I thought you have to be like a general doctor, then you can specialize in certain things. I thought that was the way. Uh, I think mine is. It's not really like a doctor. You know, like how they have nutritionists and stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's like that. Okay, okay. So you have a foot fetish. Okay. <laughs> I want to be a specialist in that. So. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be difficult. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm sure you'll do great. I just think that it will be one of the weirdest things. Like every day you have to look at people's feet. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of problems today at home. And some people don't trim their toenails. Some people have toe jam. Yeah. Yeah, I think we are cleaner than hands, no? Because yeah. our hands are exposed to like everything, while as our foot is just a socks, you know. Unless you're like, yeah, you, know, you clearly have not seen my feet, my friend. The, after oh, a wash, no. you give it a wash, you know. For, but after a wash, I think it's much more going to be cleaner than your hands because you touch everything. We don't know what we're touching, you know. Yeah. Well, theoretically speaking, I'm not, I'm not sure. You're the, you're the expert here, Janka. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I just started this week. <laughs> oh, just this week? Oh, it's one oh. week? Yeah, just this week. Oh, so how's, how's this going? How's the uni life? Oh, so far, so good. I love it. So are you doing classes online or do you actually go attend the classes? Uh, I, I actually go there every day. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I can do online as well, but I'm going there for some extra information. Mm, that's, very, that's very nice. <laughs> And, uh, so wait, you do so you, you work as well as do uni? Yeah. Oh wow! Okay, that is that 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 sounds hectic. 
<laughs> yeah, but then I um I stopped doing my day job, so I only do the night job. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's easier. Ah. Foot doctor by day, Thai restaurant. <laughs> Thai restaurant waitress by night. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, on? but I'm also an artist. Remember? Oh yeah, but also artist oh, yes, on the yes. side. Yeah, yeah. Artist on the side. Yeah. yeah, I'm also a designer. Oh, you're also a designer. Yeah, I was gonna mention that I saw on your IG you have a designer page also. No. So yeah. You design clothes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you got a lot of uh, interests. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so she's yeah. got a lot of things she can look into. Yeah, she can be a foot doctor, a restaurant owner, <laughs> selling, <laughs> selling clothes to feet, feet clothes maybe, you know, socks. Feet clothes, socks. Socks. Yeah, yeah I was about yeah, to say socks. socks. Yeah. Yeah, basically feet clothes, and socks. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, I was gonna I think I was going to mention since you're an artist, no? Uh, are you into like NFTs and stuff like that? Oh, um, I haven't really looked at that now, mm. but um, I might, I will in the future. Mm. Yeah, right now, I think it's I just have too much to do, and it's just all over the place. Mm, yeah, yeah, it looks like you will have a lot of shit in your plate. <laughs> yeah, you know, I could, if if I could make a suggestion. You could do yes. portraiture as well as NFT work, and you could make money with both because there are a lot of people who'll give really good money for pictures of feet. Oh, cool! So if you do portraiture, you take pictures of your patient's feet, make them into NFTs, <laughs> and then you get <laughs> and start an OnlyFans. Oh, yeah. oh, that's actually a really cool idea. Foot paint, foot NFT. <laughs> foot NFT. Yeah, my uh, one of my friends here. Yeah, he I, I don't know who he's collaborating with, but he started NFTs and they're all based on fallacies. No, like this Batman one. There's a Iron oh. Man, a camouflage. Is it Ugin Singh? I don't know who the, the the artist is, but one of my friends, Jay. Yeah, his name is Dinesh, and he has a oh. NFT page he shared to me. So I gave him a shout out. It's all fallacies. Divine something. I forgot what it's called. No. But yeah, NFT is taking off. I heard like in Australia, some few people are selling it also. So maybe when yeah. the metaverse begins, people might be able to use that. I don't know, but I still, it's still very hard for me to understand. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, me too. Like some people say it's a scam, and there is like the other argument is like it's really good for artists. So in the, I'm like stuck in the middle because I'm like okay, I I don't know either. I don't know enough on either side to understand yeah. it. So broke Bhutanese girl or but, sorry broke yes. Bhutanese artist sorry uh, broke Bhutanese girl is, is is completely different other person sorry broke <laughs> Bhutanese artist uh, so how yes. have you sold any artwork of yours or do you just like do artwork for like as a you know like a personal hobby has anyone like said like, oh I like this stuff can you paint draw this for me or can I buy this and that oh no I'm um I'm not doing any commissions as of now mm -hmm. because. My artwork is mainly an expression of how I feel, mm. and I only draw what I want to draw. Mm. Okay, okay, cool. cool yeah, cool. yeah, but then I have I, been, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, but then <laughs> I have been um submitting my artworks for exhibitions. Oh, cool. And yeah, I, yeah, I and, can respect. I can respect that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and yesterday, uh, uh, there was a exhibition for young artists, young local artists in our region. So my art was selected for that, and the exhibition opening was yesterday. Oh, okay. So how, yeah. So how did that go? Oh, it was good. I I Wait. even <laughs> yeah uh, yeah and uh, yeah, today. Oh yeah, you you talk. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sorry. I like I was just agreeing with you, and then it keeps sound because of the lag that I have on my side. It sounds uh, like I'm trying to interrupt you. I'm just agreeing. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So today I tried to sneak in and pretend like I was no one and oh, cool. look at people looking at my art <laughs> and trying to 
um, listen on how they are responding. Mm. So did you get any? Did you, so did you get any responses from people? Yeah, I was pretty shocked because I didn't expect people to really um, understand and relate to my artwork. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then uh, one of the museum um, curator told me that some people were very touched and they om- some were almost in tears and some even took pictures to show their show to their children. Is it uh, is it the one with humans of Timbu Bay shared? Uh it's uh so uh, if you go to my page I have a um okay. story illustration called Dear Myself. Okay. I'm get I'm, I'm yeah, on it so right now. I put that one. <laughs> okay, okay. Dear Myself. Okay, okay. So it's like a charcoal sketch, is it? Yeah, it's like um sketching combined with digital. Oh, okay. It looks quite. Uh, it looks like it's done with uh, completely by a hand instead of digital. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, can you tell the story of this artwork? It looks kind of deep. Oh. Okay. And dark. And dark, especially both. Yeah. So, um, for this story, I did a lot of planning, mm-hmm. and it came for my heart. Oh. So, uh, like I said, I really like writing my feelings down Mm -hmm. so um i like to maintain a diary and in that diary i write down how i feel and um whatever i feel and then later on i read through the book and when i find something i think oh i could turn this into a story and i turn it into a story so this one was like when I first came here, okay. I felt very lonely mm-hmm. and it was actually, I was trying to pretend to be someone being there for me. So I was writing, do myself, how are you? Oh, so it's <laughs> like all this stuff. out of yeah. body experience you know, somewhat. Yeah, I was trying to um, <laughs> pretend to be someone. Yeah, and <clears throat> if you look at that drawing, I had... There's a yellow yeah, um, yeah. spirit kind of person. Yeah, yeah spirit-like figure. Mm-hmm. I have I drew that to represent light, light in the darkness. Charlie Main. Yeah. So it's to show that we can be our own light in the darkness instead of waiting for someone to pull us out of the dark. Oh, cool. Deep. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the time we are always the company we keep. Yeah. We are the only company we keep because I I I live alone right now and it's not the I'm sure it's not the same but trust me like I <laughs> I've been living this is the first time I'm living by myself in an apartment during lockdown and my god the things I'm doing just to keep myself sane is magic. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think when you when you by yourself no, is when you get to experience your real self no. That's why I think yeah. like, like a lot of like lums, so they go for like three years retreat and just stay in absolutely with nobody, just with their thoughts, and then they get to find yeah. out like a lot of stuff, you no, know, like about the universe. So I think that yeah. a long time it can be scary if you're going through kind of a dark time, but also it kind of helps you become, you know, discover your oneself. Yeah, it's uh, true. True, true. So good, good. I like the, I like the kind of the your ex, how you express that kind of you know loneliness and how you've you know come yeah. out of that in through your artwork. So yeah, it's kind of deep right now. I'm not getting really, I didn't, I didn't read all of it, but right now the the, the, the stuff that you drew it, it seems very quite you know like uh, the message seems quite powerful. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm a big fan of and me personally. I love anything which is which has like a lot of dark shading and play with light so mm-hmm. this is definitely one of those things that i love looking at <laughs> thank you you also have one which i really like it's like um it's a frame which has a lot of swirl patterns inside it mm-hmm. what, what color uh, is it? i think uh, it's it's called it's called everything hang on it's uh, everything happens within you that's what the caption Everything is. Everything happens within uh, you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it looks like 
Dark Swirl with the same board. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh. I'm a big yeah, I'm a big fan alley, of no. swirls. Yeah, I'm a big fan of swirl patterns, so. Yeah, I see that. All of your drawings are like that. Yes, I love swirl patterns. <laughs> <laughs> So, bro, Putinese girl, artist, sorry, I keep saying girl, I'm so stupid. Okay. That's okay. What are your inspirations? Who who, who do you uh, find, like, is your... Uh... Original oh. questions, I... Ah, no, it's not original, or, like, it's, of course it's not original, but, like, you know, I'm looking at her stuff and trying to find out <laughs> I know, like, I know. What, what's inspired her. No? Uh, okay. I know, I know. <laughs> Asshole. Yes, <Anyways>. so... Uh, <laughs> um, at school, mm-hmm. uh, I used to go to the library every recess and every lunch break. And there I used to read through children's books. And that time I came across the illustrator called Sean Tan. Sean Tan. Yeah. S-H-A-U-N. T-A-N. Sean Tan. Okay. Yeah. He's Australian also, no? Yeah. (laughs) And the, when I saw his drawings, it was so beautiful. It looked so timeless and unique. Mm, yeah. yeah. So I really wanted to draw like him. Oh, okay. I'm just going through some of his. I'm just going through some of the drawings. Yeah, he's going through some of his drawings. So it seems. Yeah, very... his drawings are also pretty dark and abstract. Mm. Yeah, it's really nice. I used to, um, I used to love the illustrations that we used to get in any Blighton books. You know? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Blighton, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah like uh, a lot of a lot of the children's stories used to have these cute illustrations in black and white, which I used to love looking at more than reading the book actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool, though. Yeah, it um, is. I realized um, this Shantan illustration kind of reminds me of, you know, the game Inside, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, similar yeah, vibes. Similar. Yeah. Mm. Very, uh, very... I don't know, because I'm not really, like, you know, like, I don't know much about art, but it kind of gives me that kind of, like, you know, like... What's the yeah. Tim Burton kind of look? Oh, art. Tim Burton, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know what that uh, kind of art kind of style is called, but I always, I kind of, uh, it reminds me of Tim Burton kind of stuff. Mm. So anyways, other than your art life and balancing all that stuff, uh, how, yes. so you like, so when are you free though? You, I, you seem like you're busy with, you know, uni and your, you know, your part-time yeah. jobs and your other, your side, side point of project. So what do you do when you're free and how, op- how often are you free? <laughs> Uh, um, I'm not really free, <laughs> but when I'm free, I, I feel too exhausted to draw. So, so I end up watching TV or sleeping. <laughs> okay. So that's sort of expected in Australia at this point, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah but, yeah, but I do try. I think uh, the Bhutanese artist is uh, her her kind of experience is much more different from the like the people we hear about in Australia. No, they're more yeah like, about you know like uh, obviously there are many people who are going there for you know education and focusing on that. But the majority of uh, the Bhutanese we know is just going there for, to earn a good amount of living so they can so, you know uh, yeah and settle down. And it looks like um, Miss Chanka is in it for the long haul now because once your dad finishes, you are in uni. So I know. Then when you're done with uni, I think your brother will be in uni. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So it's this long, like they're, they're there for a good while. But yeah, yeah I think uh, my, my aunt went to Australia about a year ago and she, she just... When she got back, all she kept telling me was things are so easy down there when it comes to like, because she likes to cook. So I think she was speaking in terms um, of being a restaurant it owner. Is. It's like so easy. Yeah. 
sure. That's everything. So uh, apart from the culture shock and maybe the people speaking, no, yeah, you know, what was like your thing which you had hard time, you know, adjusting to down in Australia? Uh, um, I think that was all. You know, you okay with the schools, the people, the teaching, and the. Oh, uh, it was working? just. It was just that I found it really hard to adjust in school, especially with my classmates. So I didn't even talk to anyone. Yeah, and. Uh, But did you have any friends? By the way, you make it sound like you're all by yourself. Oh, uh, uh, I did have a few friends, but they were not from my year group. They were like years eight, nine, ten. Okay, so juniors. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, uh, but then the teachers were really good. They were very open and very helpful and very dedicated. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, that sort of makes sense because she didn't make an entire piece called "Dear Myself," so she probably a <laughs> lot of lot, lot of time for self uh, uh, reflection. Self uh, reflection. Sorry, I didn't couldn't find the second word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Kinle. You got anything else to ask? Or I think we can wrap this up. You know, kind of early. Mm, yeah. No, I was wondering, like, um, like I wanted to ask, like, because when when my when my wife went to Australia, when she flies there, she once actually came across a very um, racially motivated attack. Oh. Uh-huh. Just wondering, like, uh, how's the situation there in terms of that? Especially uh, since you're in the main town, you're living more in the rural area, right? Yeah. Uh, What's the over, situation? Yeah, over here, people are. Um, they're pretty. They're very good. They're not racist or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think, and also, there's not many Asian at my place. Mm. Uh, yeah. So you're exotic, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> exotic and rare. Yes, that's 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 probably it. <laughs> yeah, and also and because of that, it I found it really hard to make friends. <laughs> so uh, oh. how are you in uni? I, I hope you have friends in uni now at least. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm trying to be open now. <laughs> I'm trying to talk and I'm trying to just open up. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but I can. I think for like, a lot. Yeah, you, you, I think I don't know how you were before, but I think like, especially when people yeah. move from like Bhutan to like a, somewhere to the west, I feel like you get a more opportunity to open up, no? Yeah. And it's it's a very cultural thing, no? Because in yeah. Bhutan we tend not to be, be too loud, we don't express ourselves too much, and then suddenly you go to the. I use air quotes here. First, first world countries, and then you know it's where people are very expressive, very uh, aggressively expressive, and it can, it can. I think it really does. Uh, it, it it can be a little difficult to have to you know immediately adjust to that sort of a scenario. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, I think uh, I got like you know I I don't I don't uh, got anything else to ask unless Kinley has. <laughs> so I think uh, I want to I want to thank uh, Mr. Chung Miss Miss Chunka for coming and uh, so okay, like, now I'm being, being a foot doctor slash Thai uh, Thai Thai girl by night slash uh, uh, lonely person <laughs> lonely person drawing. Person. <laughs> So thank you for giving us this insight, and uh, I will I'll leave the Kinle to uh, wrap this up. Okay, yeah. thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, by the way. It is fun talking to you. It is. Um, yeah. Uh, you, uh, for those of you who are listening, this is Sidepod Twenty One. Sidelock. Sidelock. Yes, Sidelock. Sidelock. Sidelock One. Psylocke. How about Sidelock One? We just get a separate, you know, edition. Uh, no, no. I don't. We'll see what happens in the edit. What we'll see what happens. Yeah, let's not make this difficult for Norland Jam. Yeah? No, no, I'll, I'm <laughs> editing this. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, you, you do the editing for it. Um, Sai, I think then in that case, uh, when she, we need to add the pictures that she mentioned, so that 
our viewers. No, no, don't worry. When she was well. talking about it, like I'm recording the screen right now. I went to the IG and I was like checking out the stuff where she was talking about it. Oh, that, oh, cool. That, that's it. That's nice. Cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, if you would like to follow uh, Broke Butanese artist, you can do so. That's the name, all one word, Broke Butanese artist. You have no idea how much I relate to that name. <laughs> and, and yes, it, it is fun having you, and it's. Um, uh, I we are kind of we are so happy that at least you are no longer in that headspace where you were when you first went to Australia. You seem to have really opened up and seem to be thriving down there. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm trying. Yes, I think that's all we can ever do. That is to try. Mm. Yeah. Try. And yeah, possibly next time. Hopefully, uh, when whenever lockdown ends, we can do a proper video session. If like how we did. Oh, with okay. Summer. We don't know when lockdown's gonna end. And uh, yeah, uh, if you could, if you would like to follow me and Sai, our uh, social media, uh, all our social media uh, in the description. In the description. Uh, please follow Junor Studio as well. We are aiming for five thousand subscribers. Sai. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's the hope. I uh, hope you guys are. If y'all are in lockdown, hope y'all are having a, a good lockdown. Oh yes, and uh, the new episode of Getter Be just released, so please check that out as well. Yes. There are many people who want to kiss size cheeks. I'm concerned which cheeks they mean, though. Sweet, my sweet and ones. Yes, your sweet cheeks. <laughs> and yes, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. Do you have Samu, by the way, bro, girl? Yeah. Samu. Yeah, Samu. Do you know what Samu is? Oh yes, I have that. Oh, you should check out our series. It's uh, we have two episodes now, so we have. Uh, is it comedy. is it the Gejo or something? Yes, Gejo Bay. Yeah, yes. Is. Oh, okay. I'll watch that. Please do. We have some uh, unpleasant comedy. You can check out. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. With that being said, thank yes. you for coming again. Kinle outro. Bye bye.